When it comes to DIY, there's a lot that you can do to make your life so much easier. If your workspace looks like the one that we're in, it's best maybe you create a dedicated and organized workspace to work in. Yeah, I like functional and workable and user-friendly, right? So, for example, I like a long, sturdy bench so I can place my tools, and I like shelving where I can place my materials. Exactly. For me, oh, organization is key. I hate it when I can't find the right paintbrush, the right tool, the right materials. So, where do we start? Well, basically the first step is to clear and clean the space so we have a blank canvas to see what we're working with. Let's do it. Clearing out the garage is a must if you wish to have an organized workspace. Take this opportunity to check old paint tins, discard of rusted screws, and donate what is no longer needed. Before painting the walls, Fill any cracks or holes with some filler. With the walls now prepped, it's time for the painting. Our first step is to use the painter's tape to mark out the areas that we don't want to get paint on, and then I'm gonna go in with the cutting first. Cutting refers to a time-consuming but vital part of painting. Taking time to neatly paint around floor skirtings, windows and ceilings means a professional outcome. Okay, so we went with a washable paint. That means that dirt and grime can be easily cleaned off the walls. Also, we chose a dark charcoal gray color. This will define the space and give it its own sense of identity. To cover up the glass bricks, we simply apply two coats of universal primer. Wait for it to dry and paint over with our desired top coat. So while Elle finishes up painting over there, I've got my DIY project ready to go. And as you can see, I'm going to be creating a portable workbench. Now I'm already using a fixed workbench which will go into our space, but this is great for those jobs that are on site. So what you'll need for this project is a thick wooden countertop, a middle shelf, some legs out of pine wood, some skirting pieces, bolts and nuts, a pocket hole jig, a template, cordless drill, a sander and a miter saw. Our first step will be to create some pocket holes to secure our skirts to our countertop. So with our countertop now upside down, I've placed our skirting edges like this and that's how they'll be secured to the countertop. So you can see I'm going to be marking out where we're going to be creating pocket holes uh, on each corner like this, which will secure the two pieces and then also where it will secure into our countertop. So just mark out evenly spaced areas where you'll be intending to make your pocket holes. With the lines for the pocket holes now marked, I'm going to place it into our pocket hole jig. Now the reason I'm using a pocket hole jig is to hide our screw holes and our screws. And you can see it uses a stock collar system, which I placed into the measurement. And because we've got 20 millimeter wood, the next measurement is 19 millimeters. This ensures that we don't drill through the wood. So what I'm going to do is line it up with the middle hole in order to make our pocket hole. Clamp it into place and start drilling. A pocket hole jig is a great tool to have when you are looking to build furniture as it allows for a really strong bond while hiding screws. With our pocket holes now complete, we can start assembling of our skirts. But just before we do that, we need to consider that we'll be having our legs on the corners here. Now, if I had to secure our skirts together, I wouldn't be able to get our bolts through. So what I've done is I've created a little jig. As you can see, I've taken a notch out of one of the poles for the leg in order for it to stop against our skirt and keep it upright. And that'll help me also to align our bolt hole. So let's get started. To mark where I need to drill for the bolt to pass through, I simply place the bolt into place and give it a tap with a hammer. To secure the skirt to the worktop, simply lay it out, add wood glue and secure into place using screws. With our pocket hole screws now securely holding our skirt in place, we can move on to each of the legs. So the legs will fit into each of the corners like this, but I've measured the legs about 720, which is midway of the length of our table, because they'll be folding 
in half like that. Now in order to cut out the legs, I've created the jig that I told you about earlier and I'm going to be placing it like this on each of the legs and just simply drawing the outline. Once the outline is done, we can uh, use a jigsaw to actually cut out the shape so that we can ensure each of them are the same. With the first leg cut out, simply transfer the measurements to the other three legs and continue to cut them to size using a jigsaw. Once done, drill a hole for the bolt to pass through the top of each leg. With all four of our legs now cut using the template that we used earlier, we can now simply pop your leg into place using a bolt, but make sure to add a washer just to protect your wood surface from the outside. And then add another washer on the inside again to protect your wood surface here. Pop it through the hole and finish up with another washer and a bolt. Okay, use a couple of these guys and tighten it up and now you should have one leg firmly in place. Continue with the other three legs and then we can move on to the side bracing. So with our legs now in place we can add supporting beams as you see over here and I've already pre-cut them. The only thing left to do is add pocket holes so that we can secure with pocket hole screws. Adding a shelf not only serves as additional storage space, but also helps to stabilize the table. To do this, drill a hole through the bottom shelf and the leg brace using a forstner bit. Thanks, man. Well, the amazing thing is it's light and portable. We can use it on site when we're not in the workshop. Yeah? Oh, speaking of the workshop, second coat is dry, so should we move it in? Looks good. Let's do it.